And now we come to Double Dragon 2, which makes some great improvements over the original game, most notably the addition of a two-player mode for the actual story. However, it's not quite there. We do get improvements to the graphics, and we also get an actual storyline besides a guy on a street punching a woman in the stomach and dragging her off. But some of the same issues that we had in the original Double Dragon are still here, such as the enemies still having the ability to make cheap shots like that. We get a few new moves such as the hurricane kick, the knee, and a powerful uppercut. However, the game seems to be completely random as to when you can actually use those moves. It almost seems like you can only use them at certain times or something. There's a better variety of enemies to fight this time around and also the boss fights seem more relevant such as this guy which is the f end of the first stage and he I don't know why he does that but I don't know I always thought that was kind of cool um, however if you noticed one thing that's weird the kick works backwards like whatever direction you're facing when you press the kick button you kick the other direction I honestly think that was a bad decision now, hooray, the side-scrolling stages have returned. Are everybody's favorite. To be honest, though, they do work better than they did in the first Double Dragon game. Um, it just seems to have better controls overall, and like it's actually supposed to be part of the game. As you've noticed, the graphics are definitely improved over the first game. They have more of a feel of the arcade version, although it's not quite there, but I mean the NES hardware is pretty limited, so I'm going to give it, you know, I'll give it a pass on that. Um, there's a lot more variety in the environments, uh, they're more detailed, the characters themselves are better animated and, and, you know, are larger than they were. Overall, the graphics are pretty good for a Nintendo game. They're not the best you'll see, but in comparison to other beat-em-ups that are well known, such as Battletoads or Ninja Turtles, it looks good enough. The music and sound effects overall are more well suited than they were in the first game. They definitely have a higher tier of production and they just don't sound bad at all. This is one tune in particular I found catchy. One of the gripes I had with the original game was that there wasn't really a way to strategize, a way to get out of certain fights without taking damage, or with taking as little damage as possible. And this is a perfect example with this boss fight right here. Well, it's like a sub-boss, I guess. He constantly throws in counter punches, and if you try to do any kind of jump attack, the spike ceiling will automatically hit you like that. So, it's a really... It's a big pain in the ass, and it actually happens more often in this game than it does in the first game. The only saving grace here is that the game is actually a little bit easier overall. And there's also a life glitch that you can take advantage of if you're only going single player, which I'm going to show you right now. What you'll have to do from the menu is to select the two-player B option because that option allows you to attack the other player. And when you kill them, it restores a life to you and it takes one from them. This might be useful actually if you want to do it as a two-player game and one of you is about to lose a life, you can have the other person kill them before the enemy does in order to, you know, be able to trade the lives out. But, yeah. And with how cheap the game can be, you're really going to need these extra lives. It still forces you to do the shitty platforming. I lost a whole life just because I didn't make the jump. That doesn't seem fair. Especially when you consider there is no continue system of any sort and there is no password setup option of any sort. So the game is pretty much leaving you high and dry hoping that you can make those, those jumps. And we'll go ahead and conclude the review with what is quite possibly one of the worst segments of this game. Um, it forces you to do this shitty platforming on a side-scrolling stage with these... I don't know what it's spitting out. Fire, I guess, but it looks like water to me, or smoke, perhaps. But 
This is just ridiculous. It is almost impossible to get up there. I mean, without a lot of trial and error, of course. I mean, the little bit of segment that you guys seen, that was, like, the last part of it. You know, I was I was probably trying that for, like, two or three minutes before, before I got to that point. And, of course, you know, I still have to fight a whole bunch of enemies. But, overall, I do like Double Dragon 2. It's out of the... Th between this and the first Double Dragon game, this one I actually do like. Um, I do recommend this for fans of beat-em-ups on the NES. And that just leaves Double Dragon 3. Yes, the infamous Double Dragon 3. Yes, I have to play Double Dragon 3 in order to finish this trilogy.